So in example one, what we're going to do is um, we're going to fix one of the points. So this says estimate estimate the slope of the tangent line, which is the rate of change or the instantaneous velocity. So we know now we can write that as um, instant like like instantaneous velocity. I mean, it's like that. It's not exactly that because we're not dealing with distance and time per se, but you can think of that as an example. I put like, okay. And this curve is our function. And this x equal to one, this is the fixed point. So this, this one, one, right? If you put one in for x, you get one squared, which is one. So this one, one, this is the uh, fixed point. And these A, B, C, and D, this is the second point. So our goal is to try to see where it looks like that slope is going. Okay. So we're just gonna calculate a bunch of slopes here. So let's do it. So the slope of the secant line is gonna be the change in Y values over the change in X values. And my y value is four, my second y value is one, my uh, x value is two, my second x value is one, I get three over two, or three over one, which is three. Any questions? It's pretty straightforward, right? Let's look at it, the next example. Let me copy this. I copy it here just to save myself some time. Like so. Okay. So in this case, my change in y values will be nine over four minus one over three over two minus one. Right. So um, that's going to give me five over four divided by one over two. Um, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. I hope you guys know that because we use this a lot. This dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let me write a comment. I don't want to make any assumptions. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by reciprocal. Okay, so this would result in um, five over two, which is 2.5. Let's highlight these numbers as our answers. Okay, so um, any questions? I'm just moving that point, the second point, closer and closer to the first point. I'm trying to mimic that slider moving to the fixed first point there. But we're actually calculating what these slopes are going to be. So then for this third part C, that's going to be 1.1 minus 1 over 1.21. Whoops, I put it upside down. Do you see that mistake that I just made there? I put the x value on top instead of the y value, so that'd be incorrect. So I have to fix that. So this would be um, 1.21 minus one over 1.1 minus one, right? So when you subtract these guys, you're gonna get 0 0.21 in the numerator. In the denominator, you're gonna get 0 0.1. And when you simplify that, that's gonna give you 2.1. Any uh, questions about that? All right. So um, for this last one, we're gonna have 1.0201 minus one divided by 1.01 minus one. When you subtract those two guys, you're gonna get 0 0.0201 
divided by 0 0.01. And when you simplify that, that just moves the decimal place to the right by two. So that's gonna be 2.01. Any questions so far? Do we have to um, leave it as a decimal or can we also leave it as a fraction? That's a good question. Um, to be honest, in math, we usually prefer fractions, but, um, or at least in calculus, I would say. But for this particular example, Linda, I'm trying to make a point. And it's easier for me to make my point if we write it as a decimal. So let me tell you what that point is. If you look at these four numbers, where does it look like my number is going? <laughs> Any guess? Yeah, Kenneth says it looks like it's going to two. So in this particular case, we would say the limit is going to two. And I think if it was in fractional form, I don't know if you'd be able to see that so easily. So that's why I, I simplify it to a decimal answer. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. No worries. So um, 